everyone, it's Maki here. Today I'd like to give you some news about the Gundam series. We'll talk about Bandai's commercial activities, the life-size Gundam statue's new figures, and some tidbits about the history of the Universal Century world. We'll cover a variety of topics. So let's get started. First of all, here's a little bit of news about the Gundam Seed series. Bandai Namco Entertainment has filed a trademark application. This is a public system in Japan that companies use to reserve exclusive rights to names for their products or services. I imagine similar systems exist outside of Japan as well. Bandai has registered the term Battle Destiny. No further details are available at this time. Some fans are speculating, wondering if it could be an upgraded form of Destiny Gunnam. Interestingly, a game called Gunnam Seed Battle Destiny was released in the past. It was an action game where you controlled mobile suits and fought in battles. Since the game was released in 2012, it might look a bit retro compared to more recent titles. However, fans appreciated that you could control not only Gundam type mobile suits, but also many of the supporting units. There is also a commercial plan for the Gundam Seed series called Project Ignited. It was announced in 2021 and its goal is to further expand the Seed series through various areas such as movies, comics, and Gunpra models. Of course, the movie Seed Freedom, which will be released this year in 2024, is part of this project. The spin-off, Seed Eclipse is also one of the initiatives and the project ignited. The development of a new game has also been announced as part of this project. No details have been revealed, but the creation of the game itself has been confirmed by official media. Battle Destiny could make a comeback with updated mobile suits. Let's wait with anticipation. Next, some news about the life-size Gundam statue. The Gundam statue that will be on display at the International Expedition in Osaka, Japan has been completed. The statue itself is an adapted version of a previously exhibited statue. A Japanese priest offered prayers to the head of the Gunnan Blessing, the completion of the statue and wishing for its safety as he watched the head being ducked. Watching this scene reminded me of Gunnan Double O. In the spin of Double O.N., there's a moment where a priest prays over the first unit of the Union Ryudo, which is very similar to what happened with the statue. At the International Exposition, the Gunnan series will have an event called Gunnan Next Future Pavilion. It seems that the goal is to imagine and provide a simulated experience of humanity advancing into space. The Gundam statue is displayed in a pose where it has one knee on the ground and one arm, extended to the sky. Fans seem to be divided on this pose. While the gesture of reaching into space is understandable, some feel that it lacks a bit of style. I understand where they are coming from. Personally, I would have preferred a pose where the Gunnam has its hand extended to the ground, inviting people. It's a pose often used in the Gunnam series, and it was also seen in the final scene of Seed Freedom. It could create the image of future technology that Yoshiyuki Tomino envisioned, extending a hand to us in the present. However, this pose probably has strategic reasons. There seem to be laws regarding the height of the statue as a structure. I don't know all the details, but apparently it's impossible to have the gun on standing, a prior due to legal restrictions, the last shooting pose is not legally possible. 
Also, I guess they wanted the Gundam to stand out as much as possible when filmed from the air by helicopters or drones. With the arm raised to the sky, the statue would be more visible from above. There are also some opinions like isn't it inappropriate for Gundam being a weapon to be part of a peaceful celebration? It's true that Gundam is a weapon designed for battle. However, before being a weapon, one of the themes of the Gundam series is that Gundam is just a tool. How it's used is determined by people, and the result depends on the hearts of those who use it. The depiction of moral suits being used to help people in their daily lives is a recurring theme in the Gundam series. In Tane Gundam, there's even a scene where a nuclear weapon is used to save people's lives. Now let's move on to a little Universal Century news. It seems that Requiem for Vengeance is doing well in the ratings. However, some fans had concerns when Requiem for Vengeance was released. The series was often promoted as the first Gundam series led by creators from outside Japan. The director was Mr. Rosmus Rostow from Germany, and the script was written by Mr. Gavin Hignite, who works in the United States. This caused concern among fans as to whether G. Savior had been erased from history. G. Savior was directed by Graham Campbell, and many aspects of the production, including the cast script and music, were handled by creators outside of Japan. Although G. Savior wasn't a commercial success, it still has a dedicated fan base. Personally, I think it's attempt to tackle the unglamorous, but important issue of food shortage in the Universal Century was quite admirable. Fans were concerned and wondered if G. Savior had been forgotten, since Requiem for Vengeance is being promoted as the first overseas-led project. However, there was an interesting article in the October 25th issue of Ganames magazine. Ganames is the official media for the Gundam series. This month's issue covered various news related to Gundam Fogger 91. One article mentioned Site 4. In the Universal Century, several space colonies form local governments known as sites. Site 4 is one of them. And it was on Site 4 that the events of G. Savior took place in UCL 223. This event was included in the article as part of the history of Site 4. So, G. Savior fans can rest a little easier now. The magazine also previewed a new comic related to Gundam Fogger 91. The new comic subtitled Eternal Wind will be serialized soon. The goal is to tell the story of the movie in more detail. Let's take a look at a comment from the author, Mr. Junji Ono. This year marks the 30th anniversary of my career as a manga artist. In fact, it was 30 years ago that I first read the novel version of Fogger 91. My life as a manga artist has been dedicated to telling the story of Fogger 91 through comics. It may be a bit of an exaggeration to say that I'm confident about it, though. But it would make me very happy if I could dedicate my accumulated skills to Fogger 91. I hope everyone enjoys it as much as I enjoyed working on it. Maybe there will even be elements related to G. Savior. By the way, if you abbreviate Eternal Wind with its initials, it becomes EW, which is the same as Endless Vaults from Gunnar Wing. Isn't that kind of cute? Finally, let's take a look at the new action figures. It's the Robot Spirits Galbo Debater. 
the robot spirits figures aim to replicate the appearance of the mechas as closely as possible to how they looked in the anime. The Galbo Debater is an enemy mobile suit that appeared in Zeta Gunnam. Since it was a minor supporting character with limited screen time, many fans were surprised when its figure was announced. The design was created by Mr. Mamoru Nagano. In fact, the design of the Galbo Debater faced many challenges. Nagano worked closely with the staff responsible for the scientific aspects of the design, engaging in detailed discussions to bring the Galbo Debated to life. However, during the early production of Zeta Gundam, many staff members were still heavily influenced by the design of the original Mobile Suit Gundam. As a result, many staff members initially reacted negatively to the design, saying things like that's not a mobile suit or theirs. No way a mobile suit that inherited Zion's DNA would have such a slender body. Despite the backlash, Tomino approved the design and the gal body beta made its appearance in the TV Annie. And so the gal who debated with its bold and challenging design for the time was born into the Gundam universe. Although it's not set in the universal century, the Gelguk Menace of Seed Freedom also has a sleek and stylish design. Some may feel that it's closer to the design of the gal who debated than the original gal who. Nagano's ambitious challenge helped expand the create the possibilities of the Gundam series. The Galbo Debater figure will not be available as a premium Bandai exclusive but for general sale in stores. The price is about $72. Please note that the price may vary depending on the exchange rate. The release is scheduled for April 2025. Please note that the release schedule may vary depending on your region. Although a minor character, the gal who debated played an important role in the history of the Gundam series. Why not add it to your collection? Thank you for watching until the end. See you next time.